Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how we can create a complex database schema in SQL. So in the last tutorial, I showed you guys this database over here. It's this company database. This is basically just a, an example database that I created, and it's a database that we're going to be using for the remainder of the course in order to learn a little bit more uh, advanced SQL querying and stuff like that. So this is a company database, and we have a bunch of tables like this employee table, branch table, works with table, etc. And in the last video, I kind of talked about uh, what each of those did. We looked at some of the different relationships between the tables. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can actually implement this database. So how can we take this database and actually create it? Uh, in MySQL. So not only are we going to create all of these tables and we're going to define all of these relationships like the foreign keys and all that stuff, we're also going to populate all of that information. So I'm going to populate these database tables with all this information. That way we can use that information going forward for the examples. So this tutorial is going to be pretty cool because I'm going to show you guys how to build an advanced database schema just like this, right? It's a little bit more complex than the student table we had looked at before. And before we get started, I just want to say all of the code that I'm going to be using in this tutorial is going to be available in the description below. So there'll be a link that you can click on and I'll have all of this. So, you know, you don't have to type out everything that I'm typing out. Um, and in fact, I'm just going to be pasting in a bunch of stuff. So uh, that way you don't have to type anything. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we're going to drop that student table. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop table student and we'll go ahead and drop that table that way we don't have to uh, worry about it and so once we've gone ahead and dropped the student table now we can start creating all of these tables for our company database so i'm just basically going to paste in the code for creating each of these tables i already have it all written out and i'll kind of walk you guys through what it is and what we're doing so here we have create table employee so we're going to create this employee table we have our employee ID, which is an integer, and this is going to be the primary key of the table. And then we also have first name, last name, birthday. So birthday is actually a date, as you can see over here. We haven't used the date data type yet, but we're using it now. Date will allow us to store a date just like this with a four digit year, two digit month, and a two digit day. We're also storing their sex, so like male or female, uh, and that's just a Verchar one. We're storing the salary, and then we're also storing the supervisor ID and the branch ID. And if you guys remember from the last video, the supervisor ID is a foreign key, which points to another employee. And the branch ID is also a foreign key, which points to the branch table. Now, here's the thing, we can't actually make these foreign keys just yet because the employee table doesn't technically exist yet and the branch table doesn't technically exist yet because I haven't created them. And so I can't define these guys as foreign keys just yet. We're gonna do that later and we'll add that in afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we'll create the employee table just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and create the branch table. So I have the code for the branch table right here. So we're gonna create table branch and this is just this guy down here. So it has a branch ID, which is the primary key, branch name, and the manager ID. So remember, the manager ID is down here in green. The manager ID is also a foreign key. So um, the manager ID, we're actually gonna be defining as a foreign key, which points to the employee table. And then we have the manager start with date, which is a date. So down here, I'm defining a foreign key. So in order to create a foreign key, I can just say foreign key and then inside of parentheses, put the name of the column that I want to be the foreign key. In our case, it's manager ID. And then I can say that it references employee and then inside parentheses, uh, just the name of the column in the employee table, which is gonna be employee underscore ID. And then finally, I'm gonna do one more thing, which is over here, I'm going to say on delete set null. And we're going to talk more about what on delete set null does uh, in a future video. But for now, just know that whenever we're creating a foreign key, um, we're going to put on delete set null, or we could also put something called on delete cascade, which again, I'm going to talk about in a future video, but just put that in there. Um, and that'll make it a lot easier for us to uh, manage this foreign key. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this and we'll create the branch table. So looks like that went well. All right. So next thing we need to do is we need to set the super ID and the branch ID of the employee table as foreign keys. So remember down here in the branch table, we set the manager ID as a foreign key, but we weren't able to do that with the supervisor ID or the branch ID in the employee table because uh, the branch table and the employee table haven't been created yet. So I'm going to show you guys how we can do that. 
So down here I have two little blocks of uh, SQL code. The first one is altering the table employee and I'm just saying add foreign key and then inside of parentheses we're putting branch ID so that's gonna be the foreign key. Uh, references branch and then branch underscore ID and on delete we're gonna set null. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna add branch ID as a foreign key to the employee table. So I'm gonna run this and now this is gonna be a foreign key. And then down here we can do the same thing, but for supervisor ID. So you see supervisor ID right there. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And this will add the supervisor ID as a foreign key, just like we did with the branch ID. So we needed to do that because when we created the employee table, the branch table and the employee table hadn't been created yet. So we couldn't add them as uh, foreign key relationships. All right, so now we're going to add the client table. So you'll see over here, create table client and we're just storing the client ID as a primary key, client name, um, branch ID, and then we're gonna make the branch ID a foreign key. So over here on the client table, you'll see that the branch ID is a foreign key. It points over to branch. So we're gonna define that relationship here. I'm just saying foreign key branch ID references branch branch ID and then once again we're just gonna say on delete set null so let's go ahead and create the client table I'm just gonna run this and that'll create the client table so next we have the works with table so the works with table is actually pretty unique because it has a composite primary key so the primary key has the employee ID and the client ID and actually what's unique is that each component of the primary key is a foreign key so employee ID is a foreign key and client ID is a foreign key. And so over here, we can create this table. I just have employee ID, client ID, total sales. The primary key is employee ID and client ID. And then the foreign keys are employee ID and client ID. And you'll notice over here, instead of saying on delete set null, I'm saying on delete cascade. And again, I'm gonna talk more about on delete set null and on delete cascade in a future video. But uh, for now, just know that you need to have this here in order for you know everything to kind of be set up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we'll be able to uh, insert or create the works with table. And then finally, we're gonna create our last table, which is the branch supplier table. And this is actually kind of similar to the works with table. So down here we have the branch supplier table. It also has a composite key. So that key is made up of multiple columns. Uh, and the branch ID column is a foreign key, but the supplier name column isn't a foreign key. So this one's uh, actually pretty interesting as well. So we have branch ID, supplier name, supply type, and then the primary key is branch ID and supplier name, and the foreign key is just uh, branch ID. And again, with this one, um, on the foreign key that's also part of the primary key, I'm just saying on delete uh, cascade. And so that's gonna be uh, what we're gonna need there. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and you'll see over here that um, everything got entered in correctly. So now we have all of these tables created, right? We created uh, all the tables for our database schema. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually insert information into those tables. Now, when we're inserting information into these tables, because we have all of these like foreign key relationships, we're actually gonna have to do it a specific way. And so I'm gonna walk you guys through how we might do something like this. And it'll give you an idea of how you could do it. So I'm actually gonna make the text a little bit smaller. So over here, I'm gonna show you guys how we could insert all of the uh, information for uh, the corporate branch. So inserting the employee and the branch entries for the corporate branch. Now you'll notice over here that the employee table and the branch table have uh, foreign keys that point to each other. So the employee table has a, an entry over here, branch ID, which points to the branch or points to a specific branch and each branch has a column here, manager ID, which points to a specific employee. So there's like this circular relationship. So when we're inserting these elements, we're gonna have to do it in a specific order. So over here, I'm uh, just starting with, like I said, the corporate branch. So I'm inserting into the employee table values 100, uh, David Wallace. So I'm inserting in this David Wallace row over here. And you'll notice that I put all this stuff in here but when I get to branch ID, which is this last uh, element over here, it should be one, right? So David Wallace should belong to the corporate branch, but the problem is that the corporate branch hasn't been created yet. So I'm just gonna set this equal to null because that branch hasn't been created yet. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and insert David Wallace in there. So I'm just gonna run this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert the branch into the branch table. So I'm inserting into the branch table values one corporate 100. So now that I, since I already inserted the David Wallace employee, I can set David Wallace's uh, employee ID as the manager ID on the branch row. And so now I'm uh, inserting in the corporate branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then what I need to do now is I need to update that David Wallace entry to say that he works for the, the corporate branch, right? So down here I'm saying update employee, set branch ID equal to one, where employee ID is equal to 100. So that'll go ahead and update uh, David Wallace. So the last thing we're gonna do now is just insert the last employee into the corporate branch. So you'll see uh, Jan Levinson is actually getting uh, inserted into there. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So now we have all of our employees inserted into the corporate branch. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other branches. So we'll do the same thing for the Scranton branch. And here I have the code to do that. So again, I'm inserting in the manager of the Scranton branch. So I'm doing that right now, which is Michael Scott. Then I'm inserting the actual Scranton branch. Then I'm updating Michael Scott to say that he works at the Scranton branch. And then finally I'm adding in uh, Angela, Kelly, and I'm also adding in Stanley. So now I have all of the employees in the Scranton branch. And again, we have to do it that way because we have this like circular relationship with the uh, foreign keys between the employee and the branch tables. So then finally, we'll do the same thing for the Stanford branch. So I'm in inserting the uh, uh, manager of the Stanford branch, and then I'm inserting the actual Stanford branch, and then I'm updating the manager of the Stanford branch to say that he works at the Stanford branch and then I'm adding in these other employees. So Andy Bernard and Jim Halpert. All right, so now that we've uh, done all that stuff with the employee table and the branch table, we can kind of move on to doing the other ones. And hopefully that shows you how you might insert information uh, or how you might have to insert information into a more complex database schema, right? When we're just inserting into the student table, it's really easy. But when we have foreign keys like linking all over the place, it can get a little bit complicated. So now, uh, though that is the most complex uh, inserting we're gonna have to do. So now we can just insert normally. So uh, we can insert into branch supplier and I'm just gonna go ahead and click through all of these and insert them in turn just like this. All right, so I've gone ahead and ran each one of these insert statements. So we inserted everything into the branch supplier table. Now I'm gonna insert everything into the client table. And again, this this information is just the information that you see over here. It's just written out into you know database or SQL commands. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert each one of these. All right, and then finally we'll insert into the works with table. So again, this is just a bunch of you know numbers and stuff like that. All right, so now we've gone ahead and populated all of these database tables with all the information. So why don't we check it out? I'm gonna say like select all from employees. So let's see all the different employees that we had, make sure everything worked. So down here, you'll see that we have all of these uh, different employees. We could do the same thing for like works with. So let's see if we got all that data and you can see that we do. So now our database is actually populated with all of the information that I have over here. So again, you can get all that code from the description below. But hopefully this kind of shows you guys how, you know, we could go about designing a database schema uh, or, you know, go about uh, creating a database schema like this inside of MySQL. You can see it's not as straightforward as it was with the student table, but we can do different things to make it happen. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.